Good morning. Um, today we're going to talk about hepatitis B and uh, transmission. How do you get hepatitis B? And uh, there's a lot of confusion on this subject. A lot of people seem to think you can get it from almost anywhere. Um, so let's get into the uh, subject. Um, the major ways that the virus is transmitted in the world are from these areas. Uh, and reused, poorly clean medical syringes. Um, these are those syringes that people wash. I think they can wash them and reuse them. Um, about half the world, um, all the syringes tend to be reused. People have no awareness just how enormous this problem is and how it's been the source of, of most hepatitis B and C. Um, in the West, up until 1960, and the invention of the pre-filled single-use syringe, we all use glass syringes as well. So Hep B and Hep C boomed in the Western world up until 1960. In the rest of the world, it's been booming right up until now. And there are many countries in Africa and Asia where they still reuse syringes. If you go to a school and you vaccinate all the kids in a row, well, chances are a lot of them will get hepatitis B. Um, from poorly clean to two and dental equipment, um, from sharing razors, you get blood on it, blood, blood, blood to wound fighting, uh, cleaning up blood with cuts on your hands, uh, from transfusions, uh, before 1971, there was no blood test to spot Hep B in transfusions. The transfusions transmitted millions of infections. From forgetting a uh, vaccination to an infected mother, um, if, if you have Hep B and you're a mum and you don't vaccinate the baby the day it's born, um, and from sexual contact with the viral loads above half a million, those are the main ways that people catch Hep B. Um, so here we go with the syringes. You can see here this is a, um, actually a, a doctor in India. And here he is cleaning his dirty, filthy, disgusting syringes. Um, and yeah, every third prick with a reused syringe that's gone into some, you know, if I use my syringe to vaccinate someone with Hep B. Every third person I use that syringe on will catch Hep B. Every third person I use that syringe on will catch Hep B. Now the World Health noted that <coughs> 23 <coughs> million people a year <coughs> excuse me, were catching Hep B like this in 1999. And it gives you an idea. So if you remember ever being lined up at school or um, going to a third world hospital and these syringes were used, um, that is your biggest risk. Don't blame sex. Don't blame person. That's how most Hep B, the biggest risk for Hep B, reuse syringes. And this is the mm, solution. Always make sure the syringes are unwrapped in front of you, clean and unwrapped. Make sure the syringe is destroyed after it's used on you and put in a bin. Simple. Um, another method that a lot of people catch uh, hepatitis B, I've had about more than 20 to two infections reported on the helpline in the UK. Um, I think about 20 tattooists I've had to ring and say, hey, you're infecting people. The tattooists, um, you can see this idiot here, hasn't even got gloves on. You know, he doesn't even have a clue how to be hygienic, and he's doing a tattoo, for God's sake. Um, over here, we've got a dentist in the street. Um, I've had a lot of infections. People go overseas and think, wow, I can clean my teeth for tuppence, and uh, they get happy. This guy is not um, having the equipment to clean his uh, tools uh, every single time he uses it. So yeah, the dentist, the tattoos are another method. Um, shared razors. This is way more infectious than sex. 
Um, one of the big uh, confusions about Hep B is they say 100 times more infectious than HIV. And a lot of people think that that means it's more sexually infectious. No. It's a hundred times more infectious in a blood transfusion. So a little bit of Hep B blood on her razor that you borrow will infect you quite quickly if you cut yourself. So, and there are a lot of shared equipments in homes these days. I've had lots of outbreaks from people sharing a glucose testing prick machine, uh, from sharing a cholesterol testing pricking machine, um, from sharing razor blades, from sharing the little piercing things. I've heard regular infections from girls doing Botox parties where they do these little injections on their foreheads. Um, sharing, sharing anything like this. I had one outbreak at a barber where he was using this stick to stop bleeding. He nicked someone with his clippers, he would roll this stick on it. But he was rolling that bloody stick on everyone. It had Hep B on it, so he's rolling Hep B into every wound. Turkish barbers, isn't he? So don't share razors. Very, you know, in inner household, it's this sharing. Uh, uh, yeah. Bloody fights is another great way to get Hep B. Um, these two guys, if one of them's got Hep B, the other one's already got it too. Um, they've both got cuts. They're both bleeding. Guaranteed transmission. Um, just recently, I've had two British um, championship fighter boxers. Both went pro. Both found out they'd already caught Hep B, sharing blood in a ring. And there's a lot of sports that do this. Rugby's another one. Climbing is another one. All the bloody fingers in the same hand holds. Uh, climbing trees for kids, great way to catch Hep B. Cut your fingers on the way out. Someone else cuts their fingers on the way out. <laughs> Um, bloody fights, great way to get Hep B. A lot of security guards, a lot of policemen, a lot of soldiers get Hep B like this. Childhood scrapes. Um, most Hep B is caught by children. And, you know, basically children cut themselves kind of once a week, once a day. And if they're not given plasters, they run around with a gateway wound. Um, other kids are bleeding too. Well, their little teeth fall out and they bleed. There's a lot of blood in childhood, and it's important to get plaster hygiene going. Plasters are the new condoms. 30 million got HIV, 2,000 million got Hep B from blood. Deep point. And another area I love to talk about is just ritual circumcision. Um, if you're doing that nonsense of FGM um, with some nutter witch doctor, dirty materials, cutting lots of girls with stupid razor blade, filth, um, expect. Uh, there's a reason why where they do FGM, they're the highest levels they have there. Um, unscreened transfusions um, in the West from 72, a lot of transfusions had Hep B. In the rest of the world, or some of these still do, uh, most of the countries started testing their transfusions from the 80s and 90s. During birth, now only 10% of uh, hepatitis B infections are, are, are like this, and, and most mums now vaccinate the baby the moment it's born. Um, if you're pregnant, um, you know, just vaccinate that baby the moment it's born. Um, simples. That's called a birth dose Hep B vaccination. And it's important not to just always blame your mum. Oh, mum's got Hep B, I bet she gave it to me. You're more likely to have got it from reused syringes in your neighbourhood. Um, uh, you know, yeah. Um, and finally, sex. Um, again, people have got it all wrong. Um, 9 out of 10 people who have Hep B do not infect their partners because they have a low viral load. Now if your viral load is low, 
it doesn't get into your sexual fluids in an infectious way. So that's a very deep thing to understand. Um, I've spoken to thousands of, of people who are like, why has my partner not got it? Uh, well, you're not sexually infectious. The virus is so low, it's mainly in your bloodstream, it's not getting into your sexual fluids. So it's crucial you don't run around thinking, how did I get this? It must be him or her or crazy. You know, uh, always look for the blood risk first. Um, hepatitis is far more in the blood than it is sexually available. Moving on. And this is a little schematic of um, how the infections happen. Uh, of the two billion people who've caught Hep B, up to half got it from the reused medical syringes rolling at a quarter of a billion a year, uh, a decade. So you can see in 40 years you've got a billion transmissions from these reused syringes. Um, transfusions, um, about 15%. Um, before we realise that, whoa, unscreened blood is full of Hep B very often. Mother to child is 10% of infections. Sex is only 5%. And you've got to remember that adults, 95% will clear Hep B. It's the children that go chronic. Um, and then the rest, all these uh, shared raises, occupations, nurses, doctors catch it a lot because they deal with blood, security, sports, cleaning blood. There's a lot of in there, the rest. And how you don't get Hep B is a final thing to talk about. You don't get it from saliva and sweat. And the science to this is that the hepatitis B virus is a blood virus. It lives in blood. Saliva, it's 10,000, 1,000 times less present in that body fluid. It's not infectiously present. Um, this is why, um, you know, everyone on earth would have it by now if it was in saliva. Um, you know, if it was airborne with every cough, we'd all have it. Um, you can't have like 400 million, 300 million people walking around breathing it out. Um, kissing and hugging, impossible. How is blood going to come from them into your bloodstream from a kiss or a hug? Don't worry about it. Sharing a home and clothes, no, it doesn't happen like that. It's sharing blood. Um, I get a lot of calls from guys who visited lap dancers and she rubbed her business on my naked knee, have I got Hep B? Well, no, it's impossible. Uh, there's no blood involved. Um, yeah, oh, she gave me a blowjob. Yeah, yeah, right, so how are you going to get Hep B from that? It's not possible. Uh, and finally, a lot of people have um, viral loads uh, under 2,000. Um, these are not really infectious. You, you need like to take litres of blood from one person to another person to infect them. Um, it, it's just a tiny trace of, of the virus. Um, it's also important to understand how, how deep is the cut. You know, somebody goes, oh, I had a paper cut. Oh, no, it didn't even bleed, but have I got hepatitis? Well, not really. Um, we say, you know, if, if the syringe goes an eighth of an inch into you, then we're worried. It's gone deeper into the skin. It's got to appear, the skin is like bark. It's dead, it's peeling off. You know, it's protecting you. Um, deep points. So, so those are the basic ideas of transmission. Um, learn them. And most of all, learn to stop worrying. Be frightened of blood. Do not be frightened of everything. <laughs> Thanks, friend.